Uh, Mickey Edwards is next. Uh, thanks, CJ. Uh, well, first, by, by means of context, 45 years ago this summer, uh, there was an attempt made to reshape the Republican Party. Uh, the Republican Party at that time was largely dominated by uh, liberal Republicans. Uh, and 45 years ago, uh, people who ironically were supporting a maverick, blunt, candid, straight-talking Arizona senator who had been a military jet pilot, uh, decided to uh, try to change the direction of the party. Uh, they began it in 1963 and in 1964 uh, completed the task with the uh, Republican convention, the nomination of Barry Goldwater, uh, and the Republican Party has been a conservative party uh, for the last 45 years, 44 years, uh, and that's not going to change. That's not going to change. What, what, what's going to matter is the definitional question of what is a conservative. Which brings me to my book. The, uh, the, the, there, there is a, my, and my concern is primarily not with the Republican Party because it's with principles. And, and uh, in my mind, if the principles, which I believe to be the proper ones, are followed uh, to the benefit of the United States, I don't really care whether it's Democrats or Republicans who do it. I always thought when, when Bill Clinton declared the end of welfare as we know it, uh, Republicans, instead of attacking him, should have declared victory. Um, there, Winston Churchill was once asked uh, for a definition of conservatism, and he said, conservatism was about the king and the church. Well, that's not us. You know, we, we don't have a king, or at least until six years ago, seven years ago, we didn't have a king. Uh, and we, 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 we believe in the church, we believe in faith, but, but separate from government. So... The title of my book is Reclaiming Conservatism, and I, I'll, I bring that up because that isn't the title I intended for it to have. It does have some bearing, uh, but my publisher, very good publisher, Oxford University Press, uh, I talked to them and I said, well, the, the title of the book really ought to say something about constitution because I'm a, I am above all a constitutionalist. Uh, and they said, well, you can't, th this was kind of the point that, that upsets me. They said, well, you can't put the word constitution in a title because nobody will buy it, because nobody cares about the Constitution anymore. Well, I do. Uh, and, and so I, I want to have a little say, and that's mostly what my book is about. Uh, but there, just to kind of reframe, conservatives are in charge today. Or, no, I take that back. People who identify themselves, <laughs> self-identify uh, as conservatives uh, are in charge. Uh, but... When Barry Goldwater was the nominee and, and in the years immediately after and the Republican conventions immediately after, we became the first political party in the United States to endorse the Equal Rights Amendment. We became the first political party in the United States to declare in our platform a demand that the District of Columbia be given a vote in Congress. Barry Goldwater in one of his books, has a whole chapter on saving the environment. And so there's a question of whether the people who today uh, are, are battling for supremacy of conservatism actually even understand what American conservatism is, which was based on, on the Constitution. So the main thrust of my now, – now, the second half of my book gets into, uh, as Ross's does, and Ross has, by the way, a really good book. Uh, but the second part of my book does get into some policy ideas. Uh, but, and, and there I'll just, just say, just trying to get people to go back and rethink what it was we believed in. You know, when you, when you look at the willingness today of some conservatives to use military force to achieve their ends, you know, I try to remind that we used to drive liberals crazy, maybe like EJ, uh, with how much we spent on defense, but it wasn't because we were eager to rush off to war, it was because we believed that strong spending on, on the military would prevent war. We talked about peace through strength, and one of the worst things I do in my book, because it seems very unfair, uh, is during the primaries that we just had, every Republican candidate said, I'll be the next Ronald Reagan. Look at me, I'm the next Ronald Reagan. Uh, and they would always quote Reagan. This is to prove that they really understood who Reagan was. You know, and th they would always, his famous quote, most famous quote, except tear down the wall, which was, government is not the solution, government is the problem. 
Well, you know, I knew Ronald Reagan pretty well. I was, I was head of the policy advisory task forces for his 1980 campaign, you know, and I, I knew him well. And, and I said, that's not what Ronald Reagan believed. So I actually went back and got the speech. Uh, and, and what the speech says is on page 176 of the book, in case you care. Uh, it, it, it says, in the current circumstance, which happened to be Jimmy Carter, uh, in the current circumstance, government is not the solution. Government's the problem. And then he goes on in some length to say, we're not anti-government. We're for government that stands with the people. We're for government that provides opportunity. And I have the whole quote. So my, my main argument is that we have gotten away not from what liberals like E.J. believed, we've gotten away from what conservatives believed. And so the main part of my book, this is the beginning of my book, and, and I'll you know, very quickly sum it, sum it up. If Lyndon Johnson or Bill Clinton had ever declared one time that as the President of the United States, I reserve the right to decide for myself whether I am bound by the laws that I have just signed, we would have marched on Washington in protest. If any of those, pre if, if Barack Obama becomes President and declares, I have the right to conduct electronic surveillance without a court warrant, even though that's a violation of federal law, because federal law requires a court warrant, or it did at the time he undertook it, we would have marched on Washington in protest. If people who worked in the White House declared that they cannot be questioned by the Congress about whatever the Congress uh, subpoenas them for, they don't have to obey a subpoena because they have executive privilege, even though their conversations were not with the president, we would have protested, we would have written op-eds, we, we would have done everything we could. And, and we, we have found that in the last few years, conservatives have lost track of principle and have become Republicans first, driven by political power, and that whereas at one point we believed in the separation of powers and we believed in the Constitution and we believed in limited form of government, we understood, we actually understood that the President is not the head of government, he's only the head of one of three separate and equal uh, and independent branches. We, we have crossed the line to where now if there is a Republican President Republican members of Congress believe it is their job not to serve as a check on him, but to surround him and protect him and defend him because he's not the head of another branch, but he's the head of their party. And so th that's the basic thrust of, of my book, is that we seem to, at one point, we were motivated by some sincere beliefs in the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, you know, the rights of the American people. Uh, and we have set those aside in pursuit of raw political power. And so when I talk about reclaiming conservatism, what I'm talking about is let's go back to remembering why we're in this, what our principles were, what we wanted to achieve, why the Constitution says what it says, which is a system that is supposed to protect the American people from the government, not to protect the government from the American people.